John chapter 8 verse 1 Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives this is the same mountain that David took refuge on when he was at odds with his son Absalom the same mountain Jesus was standing on when he was praying asking if there was any other way to accomplish this plan of salvation it was from this mountain that Jesus would ride the colt into Jerusalem when the people recognized him as the coming king. This is where he sat with his disciples and spoke to them in detail about his second coming. The same mountain where he was seen ascending into heaven, leaving our dimension and entering into his dimension. This is the exact same mountain where God will stand when he returns to this earth when all who are alive on this earth in a flesh body will be instantly changed to meet him in his dimension the Mount of Olives verse 2 and early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them at dawn, Jesus arrived in the temple courts, giving us a good example to rise at dawn and to get to work. We wake at dawn and draw near to our Father's house, making sure we start the day off right. The people that approached Jesus to hear him speak were God's people, those of us with ears to hear and eyes to see. We will always draw near to God's Word, and we will always sit down when we hear it taught. 3. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, the scripture lawyers and religious separatists led a woman and stood her before Jesus Christ. They called her an adulterous apostate. The scripture lawyers and religious separatists will always point fingers and call everyone else's sins out and call everyone else's problems out. Pay attention to that. Verse 4 They say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act the scripture lawyers and religious separatists they called Jesus teacher not because they believed he was a teacher but because he was teaching in the temple courts meaning they didn't care about the situation they only wanted to prove Jesus wrong on what he was saying for us today, be careful when someone is baiting you with vain questions. When they don't really care what your answer is. They don't really care about the truth that you're trying to speak to them. They just want to hear something from you so they can turn around and blame you for misinterpreting God's word. They want to fight. They want to argue. They want to debate and debacle. They are these religious people who all they want to do is fuss about who's got God's word right. We don't fall into traps. They told Jesus that this woman was found while she was in the actual crime. She was in a position to commit adultery. 5. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? They are telling Jesus, Listen, guy, we have a lawgiver, and our lawgiver has given us some regulations. And those regulations command us to throw large rocks at this woman. So, according to this, what do you have to say about the situation? And what we have to realize is this. God himself is standing in front of these religious people. God has come down and is standing in front of them in a flesh body. 
he has come down to clean up the mess that these religious traditions has caused. Because listen, in Moses' day, there was a very serious reason why God commanded his people not to commit adultery with the people around them or they needed to be stoned. Because the fallen angels were corrupting human DNA. They were trying to corrupt the DNA of the bloodline of Jesus Christ through the descendants of Noah, the seed of the woman, through Noah's son Ham. These hybrid beings were not fully human and mixing with them required a death penalty. These religious separatists and scripture lawyers, they were perverting God's original command, having no idea the real true reasons and meanings behind them. And they were just stoning people according to their own understanding. And we see God is clearing this up. Six, this they said tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. They laid forth this course trying to trap Jesus. They wanted to entice him into answering wrongly so they could arrest him and charge him with going against God's word. But Jesus pretended that they didn't even exist. Our Lord was in absolute negation and denial of what these religious scripture lawyers were trying to do. He just simply wrote in the dust of the earth. And a good educated guess is that he wrote Numbers chapter 5. Because they was in contradiction to their own law. Some forms of adultery or suspected adultery did not require stoning. Instead, it required a special procedure, leaving the punishment up to God. Seven. So when they continued asking him, he lifted himself up and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. In that manner, they remained over him, interrogating him, requesting an answer, and he gave them no answer. Instead, he rose up with authority and spoke directly toward those religious separatists and scripture lawyers, saying, The first among you who is sinless, throw the stone at her. If we would obey this verse as human beings, then religious traditions would not exist anymore. Denominations would not say that we have it right and all the rest go to hell. We would not judge in anger our fellow man for smoke, drink, drugs, making bad decisions. Things we don't agree with, we sentence people to hell. Because we are all out here trying to better our lives in one way or another. And we all have sin that we struggle with. God's Spirit is in this world, giving us love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, self-control, faith, and hope. A hope beyond what we can see. Eight, and again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. After teaching what he had to teach, Jesus went right back to absolute negation of what they were trying to do. Silence can say a lot. Nine, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman, and the woman standing in the midst. They gave audience to Jesus Christ, only to trap him. They left one by one conflicted in their hearts, their own moral conscience bearing witness against them, yet they still denied. The older ones left first, 
because we know firsthand as we get older and have struggled with sin for so long we know we are far from sinless so they all abandoned this woman as she sat weeping in a fixed position on the ground before Jesus Christ and this is where we will all find ourselves one day alone with God himself get ready 10 when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman he said unto her woman where are those thine accusers hath no man condemned thee we see Jesus rising up symbolic of his resurrection Jesus means the salvation of God he looked and nobody was around anymore showing that we also will be left alone with God himself standing over us he said to the woman symbolic of his bride where are those that accuse you symbolic of Satan and the supernatural beings that accused the brethren day and night and he made a statement to this woman which is a statement to his bride there is none there is nothing there is nobody that can judge you or condemn you besides God 11 she said no man Lord and Jesus said unto her neither do I condemn thee go and sin no more and this is what God is saying to all of us today seeing that there is none nothing and nobody that can judge us or sentence us but him and what does he say not even I will judge you or sentence you so who the son sets free is free right but here is the binding contract with God himself for this statement to be true and valid for us go live your life and do not miss the mark any longer this means that deep down in our spirit we do not desire to continue down a broken road we do not desire to keep missing out on the promises and blessings found in God's Word we do not want to miss out on the peace and love and hope that his spirit gives us so we make it our goal in life to follow Jesus Christ with a faithful heart asking him to help us clean ourselves up from this dirty world 12 then spake Jesus again unto them saying I am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life Jesus Christ is telling us that he is the one who created the light we read about in Genesis 1 3 he was and is the God we read about in Genesis and Exodus he says that whoever walks in the same ways that he walked in while he was on this earth in a physical body we will by no means live our life in darkness that means we will not be blinded by our own beliefs and emotions we will not be blinded by the evil deceptions around us we will hold in our possession illumination by his word leading us to eternal life 13 the Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. If we don't believe that religious traditions are an extremely powerful deception, look at this verse. Listen to it. Here stands God himself in a physical human body. The creator of all things. And these religious leaders, these teachers of God's word, 
or telling God himself that what he is saying is not only selfish, but it's not true. Pay attention to religious attitudes that claim things are not truth simply because they don't believe it or they don't understand it. These words were coming from God himself and these people did not believe it. 14. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. This response from the Lord reveals a lot. Listen to God's words right here. Even if I testify with respect to myself, it is the truth by the evidence that is given. The evidence given was his works. He was doing the things the Father wanted him to do. Jesus said, I know and I am aware of the place, the state of being that I have come from. And I am aware of where I am going. And the problem that the religious folks here were having is that they did not know where they came from or where they were going. This is important for us to understand. We came from God, from the dimension that God dwells in, and we are going back to where we came from. 15. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. God said that human beings judge according to our physical understanding. He also said that he didn't come to this world in a flesh body to judge or condemn anyone. So why are we so quick to stone people and condemn them? We judge our fellow man by our own teachings and beliefs and traditions. All of these different denominations and churches and religions and buildings judging each other and condemning each other to hell. And every single one of them are wrong. All of these churches and all of these holy folks judging those of us who don't go to church, judging those of us who don't read the Bible that much, stating that these people are going to hell. Listen, if you think that you or your church or your pastor has everything right and others have it wrong, guess what? You have it wrong. God will judge all souls at the end of this physical temporary age. Not you, not me, and not now. 16. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. The word if is a condition depending on the case provided. When he decides to judge people, then his decision, either for or against that person, will be based on truth and righteousness, not based on human emotions and logic. Jesus was the perfect example of what it means to be a human being on this earth. We are not alone in this world. God in heaven has sent our soul into this physical world. This means we came from God. He sent us and we leave final judgment to him. 17. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. Jesus quoted scripture to these religious separatists and these scripture lawyers who truly believed that they knew God's word. Did Jesus think that they was going to change their minds? 
He knew they would never believe him. He was quoting scripture and debating only for the sake of the greater population of God's people who were watching the debate. We must not get into religious debacles with people simply to prove right or wrong so we can beat our proud chest at the end when we perceive in our own eyes that we have won. No, we must plant seeds of truth gently and lovingly and let God's word sort itself out. Let God's spirit sort itself out in the hearts of the people paying attention. 18. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. If you notice Jesus using this little phrase, I am, while he is talking about the unity that him and his Father have, he is trying to tell these people something, and they are not paying attention to him at all. He is trying to tell them that he and the Father or the same. 19. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye would have known my father also. He just told them that they judge according to the flesh. And here they are, looking for Joseph the earthly father of Jesus. They did not understand the spiritual side of what Jesus was talking about. The fact that Jesus Christ came directly from God in heaven. God was his father. And it is important for us to get this as well. That we too came directly from God in heaven. And he is our father also. And Jesus is telling us how we can know our Father in heaven, even before we get there. If we know Jesus Christ, if we believe in Jesus Christ, if we follow Jesus Christ, then we will know our Father in heaven because Jesus Christ was the physical manifestation of God the Father. 20. These words spake Jesus in the treasury, and as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. The Lord was teaching in the courts of the temple. The treasury was one of those courts. As much as they wanted to arrest the Lord, right then and there, they had no power to do it. Jesus said that no man can take his life from him. He gave his life up freely. This man was God walking around in a human body. Everything that happened to him was because it was supposed to happen to him. 21. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. He told them where he came from. He told them why he was on the earth. He told them where he was going. They just did not believe him. The same applies to us today. Do we believe in him? Do we follow him so that when we go on our way, after this flesh life is over, we have hope beyond what we can see. We have hope in what God has done for us through Jesus Christ so we can go where he is going. 22. Then saith the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And this statement shows that even devout religious 
people, even people constantly reading God's word, can lack in knowledge and understanding of spiritual things. These religious separatists refused to believe the Lord when he told them over and over that he came from God and he was going right back to God when he died. They could not wrap their mind around that fact. And still today, people have a hard time wrapping their mind around the same fact that we come from God. We were with Him. He sent us down here. And we are going back to Him. 23. And He said unto them, Ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. Listen to what the Lord is saying. Human beings have their origin in this physical world. We don't know anything else besides what we have learned in this physical world. The Lord says that He exists from above. Look up into the sky. That's where He came from. He says, we belong to this world. So many people have no concept of why we are in physical human bodies in this world. So many people have a hard time understanding the supernatural world that God physically dwells in. Listen, He is not sitting up there on a cloud, floating around on His imaginary horse. The Creator of this world is walking and talking and existing in a city filled with things that we cannot see and things that we have no clue about. 24. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. The word for is the Lord giving them a reason and an explanation of why they are in danger of dying in their sins. He says, if, which is a word that gives a condition. And the condition is based on the case provided. And the case provided is this. The word he, pay attention. The word he in the phrase, I am he. The word he is not there. That's added. Okay? Go to the original letter that God wrote to us. It's not there. Okay? So what Jesus said is this. If ye believe not that I am. Period. If you don't believe that I am the one who created this physical world. If you don't believe that I am the one who spoke to Moses and led the children of Israel through the wilderness. If you don't believe that I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then you are in danger of dying in your sins. 25. Then said they unto him, who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. The question they asked, Who are you? Shows they truly had no idea who was standing in front of them. And the Lord refers them back to what he just finished teaching the people. Meaning from the beginning of this conversation. He's saying, I just told you who I am. Talking about from verse 12 to verse 20 in this chapter. He just finished telling them who he was. And if we are to have 
a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, then we must know exactly who He is. Jesus Christ is the physical manifestation of God, the creator of the world walking around in a human body. 26. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. The Lord himself had many things he could have said to condemn these religious separatists. And anything Jesus would have said would have been true. Because he came directly from God in heaven. But he didn't get into a religious debacle with these people. He didn't freak out and get all emotional and go off on whether he was right and they was wrong. He simply said, I speak to the world the things which I have heard from God's Spirit. He spoke the truth and moved on. He is about to tell them the truth. They just didn't like it. And to understand the mystery of how Jesus Christ was and is God, and yet God sent him to the earth, listen. Jesus Christ was the first created, okay? God existed in the beginning, invisible. And God created a physical form to dwell in. That physical form that God created for himself was Jesus Christ. Then using that physical form, he turned around through that physical form that he created for himself, he turned around and created all things. And then created us in his image and his likeness. This is how Jesus is the same as God. Yet he is different. He is the first created of God. He is the son of God but he is fully God. 27. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. They didn't know because they didn't pay enough attention to God's word. They were so focused on teaching what they have been taught by other men. They did not recognize the truth that was being spoken to them straight from God. Pay attention. That is the danger we face today. So many denominations, so many different churches, teaching slightly different things, claiming to teach the truth, and yet they all teach what they all have been taught by other men. Then we come along on the timeline, and we are taught by these same men and we pump out our chest like we know it all. Man, look, we got it. We know God's word, man. I've read it, studied it, listened to everybody who taught me and told me and listened to all of the traditions around me. We know, man. We know the truth, right? But in reality, we are just another religious separatist claiming to know the truth because we never really studied God's Word in its original letter. God's Word that He wrote to us. Front to back, every word, every verse, every chapter. And if we never studied it, if we never studied the whole thing, then how do we know what it teaches? 28. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself. But as the Father hath taught me, I, I speak these things. And again, the word He is not there. Jesus said, 
when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then ye shall know that I am. The Lord answered them accordingly, talking about his death and resurrection. He says, then you will absolutely know that I am. And that is how we know today that Jesus Christ is truly the salvation of God. He is the Son of Man because he was born into a human body and lived as a human being. And he says, apart from God's Spirit, he can do nothing. We too should follow Christ in that way of living. Let us not do anything or say anything apart from God's Spirit. He said God taught him. And the things he learned according to God's Word is the things that he was doing and saying on the earth. Listen, we must be taught by God's Word. 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. For I always do those things that please him. We have to understand. This verse applies to all of God's children. Those of us who follow Jesus Christ with a pure heart. Those of us who desire a relationship a real relationship with the one who created us. Listen, the God who sent us is with us. Our Father has not left us alone in this world. And our heart's desire is to always do those things that please Him. Jesus Christ was giving us a beautiful example right here of how God treats His children, those of us who love Him, Pay attention. He sent us through this physical world and He is with us. 30. As He spake these words, many believed on Him. Because He spoke with authority, people believed on Him. Because He spoke the truth of God's Word. Did all people believe Him? No. The religious people did not believe him. The church folks did not believe in his truth. They were so focused on their own teachings and doctrines. They were blinded to the reality of God's word being spoken to them. Look around you. This is happening again as we prepare for Antichrist to appear and deceive the world. Before Jesus Christ returns to this earth. Listen. The last generation of human beings on this planet must believe on the name of Jesus Christ. His is the only name that will be left standing after all religions and all traditions have crumbled when Satan sets himself up in Jerusalem claiming to be our creator. Listen, if you are in a flesh and blood body, do not believe the supernatural being that is in Jerusalem. Do not be taken by his deception and manipulation. Trust in Jesus Christ and remain faithful to his name and his word until the end of this physical human age.